Hi, in this video I will be discussing denotation, connotation, and myth. So I will be presenting the outline of this presentation. First is the semiotic re reading between denotation and connotation. Second is another semiotic reading, first and second order, and lastly, myth. So here are the major principles. All the cultural products and activities read as process or results of signification. Next is, there are more than one relations between signifiers and signified. Iconic, it's a resemblance, index, cause, and symbolic, arbitrary. And lastly, there are more than one level of meanings. There's denotation and connotation. Now let's talk about denotation and connotation. Now, beyond its literal meaning, it is denotation. So a particular word may have connotations, for instance, sexual connotations. So in sem semiotics, denotation and connotation are terms describing the relationship between the signifier and signified, and an analytical distinction is made between two types of signifieds. First is denotative signified, and the other one is connotative signified. Denotation tends to be described as the definitional, literal, obvious, or common sense meaning of a sign. In the case of linguistic signs, the denotative meaning is what the dictionary attempts to provide. So that is the most common definition of denotation. So here is um, Erwin Panofsky. He's an art historian. And according to him, that the denotation of a represent rep, the denotation of a representational visual image is what all viewers from any culture at an any time would recognize the image as depicting. So the term connotation is used to refer to the social, cultural, and personal associations, such as ideologic, ideological, emotional, etc., of the sign. These are typically related to the interpreter's class, age, gender, eth ethnicity, and so on. Connotation is thus context-dependent. Signs are more polysemic or more open to interpretation in their connotations than their denotations. Denotations is sometimes uh, regarded, as, regarded as a digital code and connotation as an analog code. As Barthes noted, Suzer's model of the sign focused on denotation at the expense of connotation and it was left to subsequent theorists to offer an account of these important dimensions of meaning. In the photographic message and the rhetoric of the image, Barthes argued that in the photography connotation can be distinguished from denotation. And as John Fiske puts it, denotation is what is photographed while connotation is how it is photographed. However, in photography, denotation is foregrounded at the expense of connotation. The photographic signifier seems to be virtually identical with its signified, and the photograph appears to be a natural sign, produced without the intervention of a code. In analyzing the realist literary texts, Barthes came to the conclusion that connotation produces uh, the illusion of denotation, the illusion of the medium as a transparent and of the signifier and the signified as being identical. Thus, denotation is just another connotation. From such a perspective, denotation can be seen as no more than a natural um, meaning than it is connotation, but rather as a process of naturalization. According to an Althusserian reading, when we first learn denotation, we are also being positioned within ideology by learning dominant connotation at the same time. Consequently, when, while theorists may find it analytically useful to distinguish connotation from denotation, in practice such meanings cannot be neatly separated. Most semioticians argue that no sign is purely denotative, but Valentin Shinov insisted that no strict division can be made between denotation and connotation because referential meaning is molded by evaluation and meaning is always permitted with value judgment. 
There can be no neutral, objective description which is, which is free of an evaluative element. David Mick and Laura Politi uh, note that choosing not to differentiate denotation and connotation is allied to regarding comprehension and interpretation as similarly inseparable. For most semanticians, both denotation and connotation involve the use of codes. Structural semanticians emphasize the relative arbitrariness of signifiers, while social semanticians emphasize uh, diversity of interpretation and the importance of cultural and historical context are hardly likely to, to accept the notion of a literal meaning. Denotation simply involves a broader consensus. The den denotational meaning of the sign would be broadly agreed upon by members of the same culture, whereas nobody is taken to task because their connotations are incorrect. So no inventory of the connotational meanings gener generated by any sign could be ever complete. However, there is a danger here of stressing the individual subjectivity of connotation. Intersubjective um, responses are shared to some degree by members of a culture with any, in with any individual example of a limited range of connotations would make any sense. Now, uh, cultural codes provide a connotational framework since they are organized around key options or oppositions and equations, each term being aligned with a cluster of symbolic attributes. Connotation and denotation are often described in terms of levels of representation or levels of meaning. Roland Barthes adopted uh, from Louis Hemsleff the notion that there are different orders of signification. The first order of signification is that of denotation. So at this level, there is a sign consisting of a signifier and a signified. Connotation is a second order of signification, which uses the denotative sign, signifier and signified, as its signifier and attaches to an additional signified. So to understand it more clearly, I have a diagram here or a framework. So in this framework, connotation is a sign, so the blue one, which derives from the signifier of a denotative sign, so the green one. So denotation leads to a chain of connotations. So this tends to suggest that denotation is an underlying and primary meaning, a notion which many other commentators have challenged. Barth himself later gave priority to connotation and in 1971 noted that it was no longer easy to separate the signifier from the signified, the ideological part from the literal. So in passing, we may note that uh, this formulation underlines the point that what is a signifier or signified depends entirely on the level at which the analysis operates. A signified on one level can become a signifier on another level. So this is the mechanism by which signs may seem to signify one thing but are loaded with multiple meanings. Changing the form of the signifier while keeping the same signified can generate diff diff uh, different connotations. Changes of style or tone may involve different connotations, such as when, when uh, using different typefaces for exactly the same text, or changing the from sharp focus to soft focus when taking a photograph. So the choice of words often involves connotations such as in references to uh, strikes or dis versus disputes. We also have union demands versus management offers and so on. So tropes such as metaphor generate connotations as well. Now, connotation is not a purely paradigmatic dimension. As a source characteriz characterization of the paradigmatic dimension, as associative might suggest. While absent signifiers with which it is associated are clearly a key factor in generating connotations, so too are syntagmatic associations. The connotations of a signifier 
relate in part to the other signifiers with which it occurs within a particular text. However, uh, referring to connotation entirely in terms of paradigms and syntagms uh, confines us to the language system. And yet, connotation is very much a question of how language is used. And lastly, uh, let's proceed to the myth. Related to connotation is what Roland Barthes refers to as myth. We usually associate myths with uh, classical fables about the exploits of gods and heroes. But for Barthes, myths were the dominant ideologies of our time. In a departure from uh, Helmsleff uh, theory or model, Barthes argued that the orders of signification called denotation and connotation combined to produce an ideology, so which has been described as a third order of signification. Now, in a very famous example from his essay, Myth Today, Barthes illustrate this concept of myth as signs and codes are generated by myths and in turn serve to maintain them. Popular usage of the term myth suggests that it refers to beliefs which are demonstra uh, demonstrably tra false. Uh, but the semantic use of the terms that does, that not, does not necessarily uh, suggest this. Myths can be seen as an extended metaphors. Like metaphors, um, uh, myths help us to make sense of our experiences within a culture. Differences between the three orders of significations are not clear up. But for descriptive and analytic purposes, purposes, some theorists distinguish them along the following lines. The first or the denotative order or level of signification is seen as primarily representational and relatively self-contained. The second order of signification, which is connotative, uh, it reflects expressive values which are attached to a sign. And in the third order of signification, the sign reflects major culturally variable concepts underpinning a particular uh, worldview, such as uh, masculinity, femininity, femininity, uh, freedom, individualism, objectivism, Englishness, and so on. So, the semiotic analysis of cultural myths involves an attempt to, dis to deconstruct the ways in which codes operate within particular popular texts or genres, with the goal of revealing how certain values, attitudes, and beliefs are supported while others are suppressed. So, the task of de denaturalizing uh, such cultural assumptions is problematic when the semiotician is also a product of the same culture. Since membership of a culture involves taking for granted many of its dominant ideas, nevertheless, where we seek to analyze our own cultures in this way, it is essential to try to be explicitly reflexive about our own values. And that's the end of the video. Thank you all for watching.